Did you hear the new F-150 is going to have a hybrid? Are you pretty curious what's going on with that? Well, I got the details. My crack team over at PickupTruckTalk.com put together this cool article and I want to kind of go over and share with you, the viewers on YouTube, on some details and add a little bit more of my flavor to it as well. Oh, hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome on this channel. You'll find truck and SUV news, reviews, and interesting stuff and crazy things I do. So, hey, let's go ahead and get to the article and I kind of break things down and I really want to, in this video, I want to explain to you how a hybrid works. I want to tell you why this isn't the first time they've been trying some hybrids in the full-size truck market. I'm going to talk to you about, my notes here, I'm going to talk to you about the generator, some towing, some my thoughts about mile per gallon, and my thoughts on price. And I'm going to wrap it all up. So yeah, if, if you're looking for the new hybrid, it's going to be good stuff in this video. Let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, let's talk about this power boost in more detail. Now the power boost is just Ford's marketing term for the hybrid powertrain. In this case, this hybrid has a battery, it's got an electric motor, and it's got a regular motor. And the battery gets recharged through the motor running. And so it's basically a combination unit using the battery, electric motor, and an engine. There's a different type of hybrid as well that's a plug-in hybrid where you can plug it into like your outlet and it charges the battery. And then there's fully electric that doesn't does not have the engine at all. So there's a kind of three differences there. Uh, plug-in hybrids are kind of a mixed bag in SUV world, but hybrids are becoming more the norm and for a variety of reasons, which we'll discover here. So let's start kind of work our way uh, clockwise here. So we have four designed, engineered, and assembled. It's a 10-speed modular hybrid transmission. So it does have a transmission with real gears, and it's a 10-speed. There's a 35 kilowatt per hour. This is basically 47 horsepower electric motor. Works in tandem with the engine for power and torque. And so the motor here works with the engine. It utilizes regenerative braking capture. So as you brake, the brakes heat up, it captures the energy and charges that and uses that for the, for the engine along with electric motor. That's how they work together. And it supports 2.4 kilowatt hour, 7.2 kilowatt hour available pro power onboard while in generator mode. We'll talk more about this generator mode here in a minute because it makes a difference with this hybrid. And so basically this get electric motor runs while the batter, while the engine's running and it uses regenerative braking and the engine's alternator to work together and then that goes back here and charges the battery which we'll get to that in a second so it's available with 3.5 liter ecoboost v6 engine now this is adapted for hybrid driving and mobile generator requirements this mobile generator is an important thing like so we'll get to that but this is this is basically a, th a 3.5 liter ecoboost that's been tuned a little bit differently to work with electric motor now this works with a belt driven starter is used for water pump and belt starter motor. I want to get to this back to this in a second. This is to me, maybe a fatal flaw in the system, depending where you live. And well, I'll get to that. This over here, we talk about the 12 volt battery powers engine starters while a high low voltage converter powers low voltage load. So basically there's auto start stop in this truck. That means at stop lights and at different times it'll turn off to conserve fuel. And so this 12 volt battery powers the engine starters, which the engine, it's a belt driven starter to turn on and turn off. They're electrically boosted brakes. So the braking power is not so much friction and doesn't cause so much of a rolling resistance. And you don't go through brake pads as often, which is often the case with EV vehicles. They don't go through brake pads nearly as much, depending on your driving habits. Now, some people do. Some people just love to speed up and brake as hard as they can, but this is using boosted brakes and high voltage air conditioning to accommodate engine off situations. So, and this is another important thing here too. The high voltage air conditioning compressor accommodate engine off situations, which is what I'll talk about over here. This, you, you, I'm sure nobody's talking about this, but I get hot in the summer. So I'm gonna tell you there's, there's something going on here. So this is a pro power onboard uh, inverter. You get 2.4 kilowatt or 7.2 kilowatts uh, inverter. It converts directly from current from the high voltage battery to standard alternating current. So that's placement here. What's interesting about this is it doesn't look, it looks like it's underneath the cabin. And so you don't have to lose any cabin space here at all. Now this is 1.5 kilowatt per hour lithium ion battery. This is, so this is the battery. It's liquid cooled. Engineers minimize weight. So there's not much weight. Mounted between the frame rails below the load floor. And it's got a unique vibration isolation system leaving passenger space and cargo area uncompromised. But sometimes with hybrids, though, you'll notice is that they actually ride better. They don't have as much um, oversteer, and you're not sliding back and forth because now you have weight. Instead of having all your weight and just your engine transmission in front of your truck, 
you now have pushed some weight towards the back. And so I'll be interested to drive this hybrid and see if that's the case. The power in the box, this is the 120 volt or 240 volt outlets. And that's where the pro power, pro power on board, it's the generator is back here. That's where it all goes together. So you have this electrical cord that's mounted underneath the frame that kind of ties everything together. Little details, it's so much fun. Okay, now let's talk about this pro power onboard generator. So basically it's a generator and we saw the other image where it's in the back of the vehicle. Now, why does this make a difference? Because the hybrid is really built to do a lot with this onboard generator. I mean, you can get it in a smaller 2.0 kilowatt here with the optional and the 2.7 liter EcoBoost, the V8 or the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. What's interesting there is no diesel. No diesel is not an option there. Outlets in the bed, you have dual 120 volt or 20 amp outlets. And so it's two kilowatts. Now, what does that mean? So let's say you're fixing a fence. You can use your circular saw speakers because you got to have jams, man. Fixing a fence, you got to listen to music. Actually, you do. I do it all the time. And uh, a battery charger. You can have a charging charge your uh, DeWalt drill, the eight-inch circular saw, and all that kind of stuff. That's that's 180, 1800 watts. And so you're not quite at two kilowatt, 2.0 kilowatts, but you're pretty close. Uh, landscaping crew. They can have a, a gang charger. So it, a bay of chargers for charging up DeWalt batteries, things like that, and they have the pole saw, and that's going to be 2,000 watts. And then for football tailgating, electric heater, television, portable speakers, mini fridge, blender, yes, 2,000 watts. If you decide to do all that stuff for tailgating, you can still get the gas engine. Now, if you plan on having a real big party, we're going to keep moving along. 2.4 kilowatts. Now, this is a standard on the power boost. So this, this comes standard with that truck, which may drive up the price a little bit, because we'll talk about that in a minute. Outlets in a bed, you have dual 120 volt, 20 amps, so the same thing, same outlets in a bed, 85 hour maximum runtime on a full tank. So this tells me that the hybrid version is gonna re rely on that battery that we talked about, and it's gonna, when that battery runs out, the engine is gonna turn on and it's gonna idle as it charges up the battery and then this power boost draws from that battery. That's how it has to work. There's just, there's no other pieces there, right? So we look at that uh, that one again, if I can get, oh, it's right here. Look at that one again, there's no more pieces. You plug in here, you draw the battery, the battery dies out, the engine kicks on, uses gas to charge the battery that, char that goes back to the, the generator. That's how that's gonna work. So going back to that. So if you're building a deck, and you have one operator, so you're using the compound miter saw, you're using the compressor and the battery charger. You have 2,400 watts of energy, which is 2.4 kilowatts. And you have cement mixer crew, You have a jack if you're using a jackhammer, which is pretty impressive to plug a jackhammer in your truck, to be honest with you. And a concrete, uh, compact concrete mixer. And then neighborhood drive-in, you can have loudspeakers, popcorn machine, and projectors. So you can do a bigger party, that's what we're trying to get to. Now, if you really wanna go gun-ho, you get the optional 7.2 liter kilowatts that's only available on the op power boost. It's an option there. You have four 120 volt, 20 amp switches. One, I'm not even sure what that is. A 240 volt, 30 amp switch, sorry. And a 32 hour maximum runtime on a full tank. So a lot more power. Instead of 85 hours maximum runtime, you have 32 hours maximum runtime. So, I mean, you're talking some pretty crazy stuff like framing a house, uh, mobile metal shop, day at the over or v park i mean framing house i think about like building in alaska like remote places like this would be pretty badass i mean they don't have power up there they always got to haul in a generator fly stuff in so that'd be pretty cool to do that um and maybe some places in vermont uh vermont i guess everyone's saying vermont i was gonna say remote remote north dakota montana places like that i could see a little bit metal i could see a metal shop as far as a farmer you know fixing fence or cattle guy kind of fixing fence that kind of stuff but yeah, you can use all these tools back there with that uh, with that truck. Now, there is a side note right here. It assumes 86 degrees ambient temperature and no AC. So basically that nobody's in a truck and it's not too hot or it's not too cold. Okay, so that's how that works. And that's how that generator is going to work as well. Now, they are not the first, like I said. Chevy's been trying this for years. Like I said, General Motors has tried to do this for a few years. They've had a two-mode hybrid set up on the Silverado Sierra pickups back in 2009. And then in 2016, they tried it again with an e-assist hybrid. Now, these are mild hybrids, meaning they're the single electric assist motor. So similar to what Ram's thinking about with their 48-volt thing, and I'll get to in a minute. And it cannot power the 
truck on its own. The engine needs help. Electric motor bumps EPA fuel economy estimates by two miles per gallon city to 1824. And that's the same as a 4.3 liter V6. Now these trucks were a little bit more expensive. Dealers didn't get many of them. They didn't buy many of them. Scale was kind of low as far as how much they put in production. And they weren't actually nationwide until later on in their life. Like 20, 2018 models went nationwide with this. Uh, here it is. It's a $500 premium over the comparably equipped two-wheel drive Crew Cabin 1 LT. Uh, the compact lightweight system increases curb weight by 100 pounds and delivers additional 13 horsepower and 44 foot-pounds of torque from electric motor. And yeah, up to 13% better fuel economy. So they did this in the Silverado. They did it in the uh, Sierra. It c came from the Malibu Hybrid and Bolt. And then when the new truck came out, they ditched that system. Customer demand just wasn't there. And Ram currently has a mild hybrid. Okay, so checking out Ram's website. So we're, I'm going to build my own 2020 Ram. I'm really curious to see the price difference here between the 5.7 liter Hemi and the one with the e-torque. So what they're saying is you can get the 5.7 liter for 15, 14, well, 1500 bucks, or you can get the e-torque, which is their mild hybrid with a 48 volt mild hybrid system for $200 more than that, which is pretty interesting. So, and then, you know, looking at the diesel, diesel quite a bit more, but I think it's pretty interesting. They're talking about $200 difference between those two, and they don't even offer that in the V6. You can't, you only can get the mild hybrid. And keep in mind, that mild hybrid has just a 48 volt charging system here. It doesn't have additional battery. Okay, let's talk about towing. So. We know that from Ford's statement that this truck will tow at least 12,000 pounds. The best towing for an EcoBoost is 13,200 pounds on all of from a gasoline engine. That's a 3.5 liter in a specific configuration. And so at least 12,000 pounds for the hybrid version. I'm curious to know whether offline would be a little better because you have electric motor working with the gasoline motor has more horsepower and torque. And I'm curious to know what's going to happen with the batteries in the back. If you're going to suck through that battery really fast towing and only rely on the engine, and is that going to improve fuel economy or decrease fuel economy? I would think it would improve it, but i got to wait to test that to know more. Okay, let's talk about fuel economy. So we don't have any official fuel economy numbers from Ford because they're still working on those numbers. It takes a while to get EPA certified, all kind of stuff. But we do know that they offer a Ford Escape hybrid. So if you look at the Ford Escape and you look at the Ford Escape hybrid, in combined driving, you look at 11 to 12 mile per gallon difference in combined driving fuel economy. That's pretty significant. Now, will that happen to the truck? Probably not. You have a lot more physics involved. You have a, a box on wheels, a lot heavier weight, aerodynamics working against you. Now, they said this Ford F-50 is going to be the most aerodynamic truck they've ever built. But even then, you still got some physics working against you. It's not out of the realm of thinking that you're going to probably get 5 to 7 miles per gallon better than the EcoBoost with this hybrid system. That puts you kind of in the 30 mile per gallon range for the hi highway, which is competitive with the diesels. And so it's really interesting to get to that point for fuel economy in a gasoline engine with a hybrid. Okay, let's talk about price. Now, we really spent some time trying to figure out price, and it's really hard to figure this out. Why? Well, with the Ford Escape and the Ford Escape Hybrid, they've kind of buried the price of the hybrid system because of different trim levels after it, and other ones don't. But in this case, Ford's going to offer this F-150 hybrid in all the trims, so XL all the way to Limited. That means we should have a really solid number. Now, looking at Ford's site right over here and build your own, the 2.7 liter is the stock engine for XLT, Larry, and above. And so I'm going to go off that. I can't do the 3.3 liter because that's only an XL. And then you look at the engines they offer. They offer the 5.0 liter V8, which is $1,000 more, and the 3.5 liter V6 EcoBoost, which is $1,000 more. And they also offer the diesel, which is $4,000 more. And so the hybrid's got to definitely fit somewhere between the diesel and the 3.5 liter. So if you're already getting 3.5 liter EcoBoost, that's stock standard engine in the hybrid, you're already looking at $1,000 more. And then you add in the battery and you add in the mandatory pro plant, pro, the generator, the, whatever the pro boost, whatever they call anything. So you're adding the generator in mandatory and you're adding in the battery. You've got to be at least the price of diesel. I would be shocked if it was not the same price upgraded diesel. So I'm going to guess it's probably a $4,000 upgrade over the base engine. And so whatever you're choosing, it would be that. And I bet you that bigger generator, 7 watt kilowatt generator is probably another three grand on top of that. So 
you know, you're talking quite a bit more investment in the hybrid to get some better fuel economy. Um, it's going to hurt with gas prices being so low. However, with having the onboard generator, wow, it's going to make decisions really hard this fall when that truck hits the market, which should be sometime, they said sometime this fall, uh, for shopping. I don't know. It's it's very interesting truck. Uh, again, other people have done it. Other brands have done it. They've done a mild hybrid instead of a full hybrid because they've been kind of wading in the waters. This is the first attempt from a major manufacturer I know of that's built a full hybrid half-ton truck. And so I'm really curious to see what you, the consumer, do this fall. If they build it, will you buy it? That's the big question. So, hey, make sure you check this video out over here. Got all the details now from 54. It's a really cool video. And make sure you check the website down below. And I'll put a link to where the article is. You can read more about that and get my crack team's thoughts on what's going on there. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.